That, that's me, your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. Okay. Can you see the smile on my face? Yes. So. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's guest, this is one of our signature anonymous interviews, and today's guest is a stripper. Ooh, a stripper. <laughs> I, like, I like the description. What is the description that you like? Performer. Performer. Entertainer. Yeah. Dance enthusiast. Like adult entertainer? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you have any dance background? I do. So you kind of cheated. <laughs> How's that cheating? That's more like I'm more qualified. Well, you just did something with it. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Okay. So normally people have to give themselves a fake name for their anonymous interview, but you have a stage name. So now we even have to stay away from your stage name because everybody would know who you are. It's a big city. <laughs> it's a big city. <laughs> that's pretty good. What else is big? <laughs> my boobs. My personality. Yeah, you do. You my have heart. a big personality and you do have a big heart. Yeah. Give me, um, what are we going to call you? Give me a name. Light. Light. Okay. We're going to call you Light. Um, and you've been dancing for how many years? Five years? Yeah, roughly. Roughly five years. Uh, I've always said if there was anything that I could be for a day, it would be a man Ooh. or a stripper. So Okay, let's do a little reverse up here. Why is that? I don't know. I think... Um, do you want to be the man in the club and then the stripper in the club? You, <laughs> the real honest answer to that is... <laughs> is it a sexual thing? You want to, yeah. Okay, you want to feel from a man's perspective. Yeah, and then... but feel from a man's perspective um, what it would be like to oh. have sex with a woman. I've never had sex with a woman, oh, for the okay. record. I have. Um, I have not. So that's kind of funny how that's, I, j I just want to know what that feels like. And to, to be a man in the world, like how they look at women. Or themselves in the mirror. Or themselves in the mirror, <laughs> really, and what goes on in there. Um, the stripper part is because I think, you know, um, there's always this thing with power with it. And if I was going to be a stripper, I would be a, like a dominatrix stripper. Be a dominatrix stripper I have versus. A great friend who does it. I mean, I wouldn't take it too far. I would just kind of like want to dress up in the the outfits and walk around and you know, I don't know. Yeah, but I wouldn't take it too far, just for fun. Until they're like, "Can you put your heel down my throat, please, and make me gag?" Yeah, no, that, I, I'm out. <laughs> like, I just like the outfit, dude. <laughs> so do they. <laughs> but you could see me as a dominatrix. I could. Everybody says that about me. Well, honestly, I can't. I just like you. Really? Probably because I don't have a whole lot of makeup on right now. When I, you just don't see it, huh? No. Okay. Good. That's a good sign. That's yeah. a good sign. How did you get into being an adult entertainer? Well, I was in college, studying to be a nurse, and I was in a of marriage, a lot of fighting, term is domestic violence. Okay. And I had young children and I was worried for their future and mine. And so a girlfriend from college suggested that I dance. Was she a dancer? No. Um, as a means to create the income to leave that situation. And so going to school to be a nurse, working as a CNA at thirteen seventy five with a dollar night shift differential, fourteen wow. seventy five for children. Yeah, it was not looking very good. So I made the decision on a night that I was scheduled to work to go on audition, and that's where it started. 
was that a big decision for you? Were you like, I'm, yes. I'm going to, am I, am I ever going to be the same? Does that mean I'm a, you know, bad girl, dirty girl? Did it change? Did you have a faith then that it kind of um, yeah, challenged was, maybe? Yes. I was trying to improve who I was as a person. And I thought, oh, becoming a nurse is going to make me this respected individual people would view me as she has a college education she's got her shit together it was an image thing but what i realized is i had no image where i was at i was slowly dying and so i said fuck it what is more important right now my children's well-being my well-being and how am i going to get there so i put that behind me and I went to the club and I auditioned and I made $500 the night I auditioned. $500. Wow. I really like what you just said though. I want, I don't want to just pass over that because you were in a domestic violence relationship. Was it a marriage? Yes. Did you say that? I didn't. Okay. Uh, and you're going to school and you're doing what you think society or people based on judgment, you're a good person. Yes. Good mom. This is, this is life in, inside your world. You're trapped. There's a lot of pain and suffering going on. Domestic violence. The kids are seeing this. And yes. so you make an empowering choice to take yourself out of it. And this is the way you're going to do it. And I did that by rising above what everybody, right makes you believe, Judgment. yes, you need to do to get yourself to that next destination. And quite honestly, it's all bullshit. It but. always is. If, if anybody out there is listening, if you're living for other people, it's bullshit. It's total bullshit. So I made the money that I needed to leave. And then I left. Uh, okay. So your first... My first time out there... <laughs> Girl, let Hold me on, tell gonna, you. <laughs> Hold on. When you're talking, make sure it's like that. Okay. Yeah. You so want do you hear the difference? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't believe I am showing a stripper <laughs> how to hold how this to hold mic that looks like a this dick. This microphone. <laughs> it's as big as my face. I'm teaching you something. <laughs> this is awesome. This is yeah. how you hold it. Okay. <laughs> my God. <laughs> so it's your first dance did you did you know how to dance you said you had a little bit dance it was like in the club dancing or was it oh, like geez, did, you're making did you me like, go back there go, were you like a, did you do you ballet you. where what was your what was your <laughs> no skill level the skill level was more um <laughs> <laughs> did you have school any, did i went to have, school and i did dance in school i've always had a passion like a flair for entertainment so dancing came natural for me, but not that type of dancing. <laughs> ah, the landscape of the female that put herself on stage for the first time was not what the norm is at a full bush. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a full nude club. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, so girl. wait a minute you you were that like young and naive like you were that I wasn't that young I was because <clears throat> you because you're because I was in my late 20s. we're not going to say how old you are because because I don't want people to identify you but you're not in your 20s definitely not in your 20s so when you did this you did not you didn't know about shaving not that no. any women out there that don't shave it's it's girl i was in we're oregon not, we're just we're just saying <laughs> she's, she's i was embracing my granola she, in her <laughs> did you look around like no oh, what's no. i look different i showed up yes <laughs> i showed up in my scrubs the guy said change out i was like <laughs> I got up on the stage naked, naked, totally fully nude. Well, yeah, I got to that spot, and then this did guy, they look at you? Of course, they looked at me. And this 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 guy is looking at me oh. like, uh, "You like what you see?" He's like, "You could you could crop that up a bit." <laughs> like, 
oh shit <laughs> I was like you're like you like that <laughs> I did <laughs> you, how do you break that awkward <laughs> silence you've got a fucking stranger staring you dead in the eye or dead in the vagina and you're he's like got, ah, you he's like got that? a vertical stare going <laughs> I'm like, my ZZ top look is better than yours. <laughs> even in Oregon. Yes, even in Oregon. Was that your first time ever in a strip club? <laughs> no. <Were> the li- <laughs> but on that, on that side, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. That was awesome. Were the lights on? You know, I went into a strip <laughs> um, have, you, have no. you been into a strip club? You know what? Actually, I just went to a strip club for business reasons. Uh, and, <laughs> Don't we all? No. <laughs> it's all business. <laughs> Not for your business. Um, related to one of my other businesses. And, well, I better clarify that. That's for the platinum spray tan. <laughs> Plug it comes in. <laughs> Strippers like to spray tan. So I was going in there. And it's so dark in there that I really thought, you know, I could do this. <laughs> Oh Nobody God. would know who I am. That is very true. Anybody can be. I could wear an a wig. Anybody could be an entertainer. Any size, shape, <laughs> color, <laughs> uh, skin condition. But it, you know what I love about that, though. What? I I think skin condition. <laughs> um, just letting you but, all know. <laughs> but what I what I do like about that is that um, women are embracing their bodies in there, and well, it's you know, okay. Am I just trying to make this a positive? You know, love no, your body. No, yes, there's a little of that going on. It's, I mean, are they? It's, it's more like I'll, I have to I'll feed sh- my children. I need to wow. pay these bills. I need to suck it up. I'm trying to get out of the situation. Or I'm trying to go to this place or whatever it is. It doesn't really have to do with body confidence. It's more about this is a means to an end or a means to B or C or D. It's a it's a, it's a moving platform. And actually, I can say that the women that are in there, for the most part, they are uplifting to those that you would consider to be all shapes and sizes. We lift each other up in a way. Actually, was in work yesterday, and I thought to myself on the way there, fuck, I don't want to go into the shithole. Like, sometimes you have that conversation with yourself. <clears throat> but then you get in there, and everybody's like, oh, you look so good today. Oh, my God, I love your hair. Like, there's this is it fake sometimes it is but a lot of the times it's not because what you give out you get back and a lot of the girls who have been doing it for a while realize that and so they lift each other up which creates a healthy flow in there so it's kind of like you guys are all in it together sometimes yeah you can see it in their faces like oh she's struggling today pick her up those are the good girls there are definitely some not so good girls we call those ones cunts Oh my god! <laughs> I never say that word out loud. I just say it under my tongue. You just say it on podcast interviews. Yeah, I that was. I that'd be like. Um, I don't know why this came to me to ask you, but do you girls get together and pray? I mean, are there those moments where you're just like, you know, this happened, and you know, is there are there people in there that there's do those moments happen? Not in a group setting, but if there's one-on-one friendships or if there's friendships amongst people in there, yes. Like I have a couple girlfriends that I would, I will interact like that with. All different faiths? Yes. Okay. Uh, So you got into... uh, For more clarification... Nobody's declaring in there, oh, I'm a Christian or I'm a Catholic. It's more just about the universe, like positive karma, give, be positive towards other people. You'll get that back. It's just trying to create a positive energy. And that's more and that's the between focus. the girls. Yes. Uh, so you got into it for the money, but you didn't get into it. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to make some money and I'm going to buy boob jobs and no. you know bags and all of that you got into it because you had to get out of a situation yes. um what did you have any daddy issues I never had a dad so i don't know if that's an issue or not right I would because say some mommy people are issues. Some, uh, well i think everybody has well not everybody has mommy issues but i've had mommy issues and daddy issues definitely mommy issues dad being absent 
sometimes can be a good thing because their influence in your world can be more fucked up than if they're gone. Yeah. So, so mommy issues. Um, do you want to tell me a tiny bit about that? Sure. Um, super abusive, physically, emotionally. I introduced myself, you know, that I'm a life coach, power coach, and the things that um, women share with me that they have, um, you know, endured from their mothers. You know, it doesn't think no, nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing shocks me. You probably are going to go your life trying to figure that out and heal from that. Oh, yeah. A lot. Okay. So I was going to ask you if you had, if you were totally confident in yourself. Because I think you have to be confident. You know, I, when I think of a stripper, I think she's going in there. She thinks she, she knows she's a badass. She is going to, you know. It's, the, it's she's, quite the contrary. Survival mode. I definitely, now I have, now I'm in a better place mentally. I have confidence and I view myself in a different light. But when I started, I had no self-confidence. It was So that had to be super hard for you to get up there. <laughs> with that kind of background and that kind of circumstance to get up there and take your clothes off oh yeah to get yourself out of a situation it was in wow. for me it was do or die i either i'm going to die in the situation and that might sound dramatic but i was dying at that point in my life i was sitting in the back seat of a car that i i had no choice like that person said you sit in the back and I was told to finish my food. And I was told, you're, you're so fucking stupid. I don't even know how you, you're capable of breathing. That was a place wow. I was reduced to while I was trying to go to college, try to become a nurse, try to be the best parent, try to be this person in the public eye that was well put together. I was, yeah, it took everything I had. I was terrified. It was super terrifying. Did dancing help you? cope with any of that stuff like get aggression out or no has it added to your suffering in life yes for would you go back and change it would you have done something different no because i wouldn't be where i'm at now in my life had i not go gone through those trials challenges experiences I've grown immensely a result of it. And I've seen so many things that so many people haven't seen to have a better grasp on what the hell this life's about, what I want to do, who I want to be, what I want to stand for. So I wouldn't change it. Um, because you also, when you and I started talking, you had mentioned that you feel like you're a light in these places. Um, yes. You're empathic. And so you've discovered a lot of things about yourself where you have these gifts and um, that's, it's a, it's a uh, place where you get to connect shine with other. Light. Yeah, right. Shine your light. So. In those dark places. What I once thought was a lesson is actually a blessing. Because it's helped me become more of who I actually am. I'm aligning with who I am as a person. And I'm going now on the path that I was meant to be on. I, I would have never gotten there had I not gone through as terrible as a lot of things have been. I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I not. Um, you mentioned that you're a mother, and this was definitely how you have and do provide for your children. Um, you, what, what, is, what are your thoughts on daughters versus sons? You know, them knowing that mommy is a dancer. Do they get teased at school? Do the kids at school know that they're a dancer? And do you wonder, I mean, what would you feel like if your daughter started dancing? How would that feel? And then how do you turn that around and, and say to them, there might be a time in life, because this is, this is really real. This isn't just about making money and looking sexy and this is power tripping. Yeah. But this right here is like, Here's how when you it. die, your children need to learn and know how to survive. And they're going to 
think, what would mom? What would have mom? What, what would mom, mom have done? Right. So that's that's perfect. Um, so when my I have boys and girl, <clears throat> they've never really questioned. I've just been open and honest, and I've never hid it from them. Um, some are proud. The youngest boy is, I think he's ashamed for what I do. He, he's not happy with it, but I make it very clear to my kids. It's this way. I am a survivor. I am willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that my children are taken care for, whatever that may be. So I'm going to bust my ass the best way I know how to bring in the most income that I possibly can to allow me the most freedom that I can possibly have to spend time with my children and enjoy life with them. And I do that by dancing and they eat, they're well clothed. They get to participate in sports. They have their basic needs met and they have what they want. And it's all because I'm willing to do the daily grind. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking grind it out. Those kids are the world to me. And I respect myself and my children. And for that, I go to work and do what I can. And once upon a time, I was ashamed, but I'm not anymore. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm not taking the back seat to life. I'm not, I don't have my hand out. You know, I'm not looking for handouts. I'm not manipulating the welfare system. I'm fucking surviving and I'm doing a good job at it. I got to say that I got to see you interact with, um, yeah, your one of my sons. One of your sons. And man, he's left a very big impression on me. And he is like a healthy, handsome young man and seems to have a really good head on his shoulders. Your, you know, interaction with each other was just very open and loving. And that just says so much about, you know, the positivity. Honesty is where I feel we found that place. I, explain to my children that the world is, <laughs> there's a lot of dynamic and you're going to be told to do things this way in a school system. You're going to have people that are professionals that are going to say, oh, you have to do it this way or you're never going to succeed. And I told them, just follow your gut, be honest with yourself, be honest with others. Yeah. You might burn some bridges along the way and that's okay. You don't want those fucking people around you anyways. You don't want right. to be aligned with who you are as a person and just own yourself, like own your power, own your word. You'll be fine. Any thoughts on Cardi B? I fucking love her. <laughs> I She's absolutely been... love her. She's way more ruthless than I think I could ever be. I want to be ruthless like that, but my, I, I just pretend in the car when her music's on. <laughs> Like, yeah, girl, you got that. <laughs> um, have you ever done drugs? I've done like, marijuana. Did, <laughs> oh, I did but, try but, Molly uh, once. It's so <laughs> terrible. So you're not somebody who does drugs? No. You're not typical. I, I don't think I'd be... Well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do drugs. I don't support doing drugs. Um, I barely drink. I did go on a little bit of a... I was trying to fit in with a person that I was digging, you know, and there's a lot of drinking, a lot of excessive drinking. And I felt that this is, well, there's a lot of out of control things with the drinking. So I decided that that, that That's just doesn't, no, it's not my thing. What is your view on relationships, on relationships? Period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, currently. Are you single? I'm, yes. And I wish I could tell every, I mean, you are beautiful. You really are beautiful. Thank you. I wish I could describe you, but I can't. We got to keep your identity. I met, I met the person that I have decided to just stop communicating with altogether because I'm following my gut. A combination of instinct and the realization of it's not love. It's an unhealthy attachment. That goes back to mommy issues. Um, do you feel, do you have, do you believe in love? I do believe in love. Do you love. believe in real love? Like what is your version of real love? I haven't had that version of what I believe yet. You know what I, the life coach in me, 
I've asked this question to so many people and it stumps them. And I asked them, what were you taught love is? I was never taught what love is. I was taught what fear was, survival mode. Um, how the fuck am I going to wake up tomorrow? Sorry for cussing. Oh, um, by all means. Love that I received was after a, a beating with a vacuum hose or some type of traumatic experience. And then so I was told. When you, were, when you started thinking about love, and the possibility of this like relationship, whatever, uh, what did you fantasize about? Was it something like this Prince Charming coming in and saving you? Was it like, I don't need anybody you get to married save me. and they hold you. <laughs> What's, what is, what did, what did you think love? What, so here's the I want to know what you think about love. Like, do you believe in love or are you jaded from you know, what you are exposed to. Oh, I'm not jaded. I just haven't. You're just like the rest of us just no, trying to figure it out. No, I haven't learned um, how to love myself the greatest yet mm -hmm. in order to open myself up for that same vibration of love. It's so important to know how to love yourself. I do. It sounds ridiculous we all hear it but to love somebody true. else you gotta love yourself blah 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 but it is so true and when you do love yourself then you don't put up with shit shit because you're like what it's just like cheating or liars or yeah. ones that just say lies i tell you <laughs> oh yeah do you feel you have an advantage over women who don't know how to strip? Now, this is related to this question, this this idea. I, I don't even know how to strip. Really? How long, do you see how much I talk? I am a talker. <laughs> You're like, I get in that lap and I just make them laugh and then I have these big boobs and they're like, ooh, they like the boobs, but they also like my interaction. That's where my light work comes in. Okay, so so say something <laughs> to the audience. You're you're straddling a guy right now. What are you saying in their ears? Oh, I, I'm not that girl. I'm not in their ear. You're not in their ear. No, I'm not in their face. <laughs> what are you saying in their face? Um, are you looking so how's your day going? <laughs> really? I, I'm. Such... Are you not like looking them and trying to seduce them? No. Isn't that what they're there for? Some girls are there for that. I'm a different type of entertainer. I am the girl that, oh man, I've got spill, this dancing thing all turned around. No, I have got I have this fantasy, <laughs> fantasy apparently in my head about what a stripper does it, and, and the, uh, the interaction. I guess it's probably because if I was a stripper, the kind of stripper I would be. No, girl. <laughs> I, I see. I, okay, a getting, lot is coming out. I'm getting to know you. <laughs> and what I see is a lot of myself in you the socialization side, the, you know, I just would not curious. want to talk. You would, girl, you'd start <laughs> asking them questions. You'd want to prick their, prick their I'd be brain. like, what did you learn love was? <laughs> um, is that a ring on your finger? <laughs> you just took, listen, MJ, you just took the words out of my mouth. So that's the thing. What? My, when they are dragging their wedding ring, like up and down my arm, that is like, it bothers me. But you want to know what I'm going to say to that? What are you going to say? I'm going to say the same thing you said to me. It's a process. I don't, I don't think married men should, you know, but I can't judge and I don't and I will never judge. So guess what happens in that situation? That is a conversation piece. You're married? Yeah, but I haven't had sex in 10 years. What? How come? Well, she had a hysterectomy and she's, you know, she's going through this thing. And so we, we just, we're, we, I'm in a sexless marriage. So I come here to get some type of, this is real. This is like really their life and right. they're really honest with me. And so, no, I'm not gazing at most of these guys in their eyes. I'm actually getting to know them as a human being. And that's what they're there. Uh, are a lot of them there for that so that they have more of my clients? I think that I see. Oh, okay. Are. All right. So you gain a clientele and to some degree, some yes. girls, so the guys gravitate over there when they want this type of, yeah interaction and then they go to you if they want to yeah, feel visible like if you want a 19 world. year old like you're gonna have that dry like sores on your <clears throat> penis from the dry hump you go that way but if you want this mature woman over here that has some life experiences and can relate to you on many different levels then they 
gravitate toward me. Do um, more experienced older women make more money? I heard that. One of my, I, I do have a friend that is a dancer. She's one of the smartest Top. women that I've ever met. Honestly, she's, she's going for a doctorate. Like I, she's very, and she's brilliant. a dancer. Yeah. Very, very, very smart. Uh, but she said that the women, the older women make more money than the younger women. Is that true? Because uh, men come in, they want, they're attracted to the more experience. I'm over 40 and I'm killing it. I'm so happy. I mean, I would never make this money uh, with the college degree I was trying to obtain. <laughs> so um, I was going to ask you, should every woman learn how to to dance for their man, but you're not even dancing. You're like in there like talking. I do a lot of talking. I really do. I do a lot of just open, honest talking. So am I, I'm a, I'm a, what am I? A light. Or your light. <laughs> <laughs> it comes for my life. So you mentioned before we got started that you actually have a client that is booked to be with you today. Yes. And he's coming in for that. Yeah. He's from LA. He's a scientist. Oh, you know what? You also mentioned earlier celebrities coming in. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Um, Does headline. everybody else in the room know that? I mean, obviously, or is it so? It depends on if you follow right. certain sports or TV. Okay, so when so when a celebrity comes in, does everybody like flock to them or? I think the ones that know try to get in on that, but a lot of times they are not interested in the ones that know who they are. They are looking for that naive, that person who doesn't know what they're about, so they can actually per perhaps impress them. And you said that you, you just even last week had an opportunity. A celebrity wanted to take yes. you to LA for sex. Sex. Yes, but I, I owned my power and I said, no. No. Yeah. I'm not going to fuck a stranger for $1,000. I don't know if there's a magic number that would get me on that, like more willing. So let's talk about that. <laughs> sure. Um, because people do want to know. I mean, so. It, what else do you want to know? Yes. Like in the VIP room, do the strippers do things <laughs> extra? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All kinds of extra. And but it's not legal. Right, it's not legal, but that does go down. Yes. Um, tell me how much I they, don't know what they charge. You don't? I wish that I could give you that information, but I think so we have <laughs> some girls have a menu. They don't speak clear English, but they can just give you like A B C. I've heard it. Seen it. Um, there's women like you and I in there uh, doing the same thing. There's definitely, there's opportunity to make extra money outside of the scope of the job. Has anybody ever come in you were like, um, well, let me ask you this. Okay. Do you trust men? No. I don't. Is that because of your work environment or just life in general? <clears throat> I don't, it, uh, it's life. My grandfather introduced me to my first blowjob at about four. So not daddy issues, but grandfather issues. And I've never been in a situation like a healthy relationship where I was not lied to. Have I lied? Yes. So it goes both ways, but I feel the, the this is, this is kind of an ass of me to say their lives always tend to be much greater, much more painful consequences. Mm -hmm. So no, I do not trust. My trust is earned. That's me moving forward. Um, the men in there, are they obviously got married men in there? Are they grimy? Are they, you know, it's an energy thing too. Sure. Like this is also another reason why I don't think I could never, because of just the energy of other people. I'm super sensitive. Yeah. And um, I am too. 
there's a lot of grimy people in there, man and woman. So there are guys that come in there every single day, the same faces every single day, and they'll just sit in there all day long. They won't buy any dances. They'll sit in a corner. They'll drink a bottled water and hang out there all fucking day long. Why? <laughs> Maybe you should bring the mic in there and say, do you know how to love? What is love to you? What is love to you? Maybe love to them is a bottled water and strippers all day long. This is, this is truth. Wow. Okay, it's right there. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually watched a couple of my podcast episodes. I did. You watched the one on Dr. Nick mm -hmm. Castellano about energy. Yes. And I read his book. And you read his book. In two days. In two days. I was so impressed with that. It changed my life. Yeah. Absolutely. He's a great man. Very smart. Because I felt like I was walking alone all my life. And, and then in my own bed very recently. And what I felt like was shambles. I decided to not walk alone anymore and walk with God in my heart. And then I felt whole. And a weight was lifted off of me. And I've been brighter and lighter and healthier and happier. And thank you, Dr. Nick. You, ex uh, you what, became a Christian? No, I just... You said God in your life? God, one universe, right. energy source. Was it from the, when he talked about that moment where he did the, um, where he approached God, where he did the manifestation I think was, it was more about it was he was not manifestation where he was meditating and he was approaching God. I thought that was a little weird personally. Like so hearing that, him right there that moment got me. That got you. That got me. What got me was I was born and raised into a family that claimed to be Christians, but I felt like they were hypocrites the whole way through. And so I was like, no, I am not a Christian. This is not what I represent. Right, but the way okay. he described uh, science and faith that aligned more with me as a person. And I was able to identify, yes, I believe in a higher power. I am spiritual. I am all about the universe and karma and positive energy and finding your life path. And so him putting the two together helped me bring it together, like tied it together for me. It's like, once you know that information, <laughs> like, yeah, you can't you. unknow it. And then I try to tell somebody, <laughs> listen, you have to- You're going yeah. back to the club, like girls. I did. I went to the club and I said, I found God. And one girl looked at me and she was like, good, good for you. And I was like, yes. She's, She's like, like I found John and he's right over there. Gotta go. <laughs> he's got the bottle of water in his hand. <laughs> no, and I've just been glowing awesome. ever since. I'm going to tell him that. He's one of my favorite people. I'm spreading the word. That's awesome. Okay. No, that's incredible. Yes. You will for the rest of your life, too. So good. Um, wow. You know, and, and now that's, that's why I do this. <laughs> that's why I do this. Because that interview, I've had so many people come to me and ask about that and how it's affected their life. It's just one conversation they had that was recorded, and voila, it changes the world. It's big. It is big. And I'm just over here being a stripper, <laughs> adult entertainer. What was the other one that you listened to? Um, it was about the man who had constantly cheated on his wife. Oh, the serial cheater. Mm -hmm. So I know what that's like. I was with that person. And the way he described himself, like he was a third person. I've been like in front right. of that person. It was very strange. Um. God, and here we go. I was going to ask this question. You know, I had I had a couple questions down that I wanted to make sure that I asked, but this goes back to my what my idea of what a stripper is is um, if clothes help you get in the mood, like they do for women at home. Like you know, you've got your platform shoes and your you know all your other stuff. But this is this is a, just a regular job to you guys. You're going in, you're doing your grind, you're leaving. Yeah. And to me, I'm like, you know, I think that you guys are up there. You feel like it's You're an exotic. Feeling the music. It's, yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. glamorous. And there's these like seduction episodes all fucking day long. Oh, I mean, I know they're in there just dancing and making money, but I, I think... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm really enjoying this with you. Um, Good. 
there are questions that I put out there for the listeners to um, that that the listeners could ask. What are they? So I have a couple of them here that I'm going to just go ahead and spit out. Uh, wait, this one's mine. I have to okay. ask mine first. Go ahead. What happens if you see a really, really hot guy walk away? Really? I do. Why? Hell no. That gets so social. Like, that's awkward. Really? <laughs> like, I, I start would... having like a seizure. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, no, girl. Where's the 55 year old with like the really? shoes? On? Wait, you're intimidated by like a hot guy walking in there? Yeah, I'm not there to be getting on some hot guy. I'm there wow, to make my really? money. Yeah. God, really? I'm just focused. I'm hyper focused. I wonder getting if everybody in, else is out. blown away by this. Why? I don't know. It's like when I did the Sugar Daddy episode i learned so much i was so intrigued <laughs> yeah hot guys are like off limits i don't even approach them <sighs> really yeah and then sometimes they'll approach me like because hey, i've been I waiting would think for you, you all night <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know <laughs> fuck off <laughs> like i'm going over to the corner with a guy with a bottle of water <laughs> yes just stay away from me I don't want to oh hook God. up with a guy. So that's the thing. If yeah, you find, do you hook up with guys? No. That that, so if you meet a guy, ha, ha, if you meet a guy in the club, is there such thing as I fell in love with the stripper? You know, like the song. I did fall in love with a customer, and I le I left him. And it do it, they want free dances at home? No. The, okay. No, so, I gotta know this. Okay. So you're a stripper. Mm -hmm. Do you dance at home for your lover? It's not the same. It's like the. Do they ever ask you? No, I try they to push it on to. them. They're just like they become like, like the dry husband. <laughs> You're like, ugh, <laughs> so so boring. Really? Yeah. So you just leave it at home. So how is sex different for you in your intimate life than how you feel as a stripper on stage? There's totally two different worlds. Yeah. Well, yeah. Are you good in bed? I think so. <laughs> I mean, I've never had somebody say, do you have a comic card? <laughs> I'd like to lodge a complaint. <laughs> I've had them come back. But but because now I'm wondering, you know, do you hold back this way and hold back that way? There's certain things that you do there that you don't do here. So in a relationship outside of the club, I love with everything to the point where it's crippling. So I'm learning not to do that. For example, the man that I was with, that I met at the club that I no longer am with, I would do anything to create the sexual fantasy that he wanted, whether it be dress up. Uh, this might be too much information, but um, like get a younger girl it's of age and like do a, you know mom and daughter porn is fucking hot so what yeah i've done oh my that God. i've done threesomes i've done anything that you think of that's within wait legal okay. parameters go <laughs> there i'm not even gonna go there <laughs> yeah that's a kinky size come on no like, i don't want to know okay, i don't want to know what's out in the world like that <laughs> you, this is <laughs> i don't want to urge no bye bye next question <laughs> <laughs> next question there is um do you ever feel bad for making men believe like you're into them i don't do that i don't make them believe that i'm into them so it's not your job description to make them believe that you're into them for, to get more money i operate differently but yeah. there are dancers out there that do this. Absolutely. There are girls that will string a guy along until he's $60,000 in debt. Is that a sugar daddy? No, that's a Somebody pure stupidity. In? That's just a guy. $60,000 in dances? That's an example. There's another individual who is recently, he's married. He's some well-to-do person in the Valley. Bought a house. Uh, paying the bills, renovating the house, um, basically just this girl's on the back burner for when the marriage is done. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> is it difficult to separate um, business from pleasure? No. No, not at all. 
Uh, somebody said strippers get a bad rap. They, it's said that they sell their bodies for sex and drugs. Ooh, true so or false? Dead. Yes, it's true. And yes, it's false. Because everybody operates differently. What's sex to somebody might not be sex to somebody else. So let's say you have your hand on the outside of a man's pants and you're finessing his penis and he, he comes. Did we just have sex? Yes or no? You know, um, <laughs> that's the question. Um, yeah, that's funny that you even asked that because I was going to, um, I have an episode coming up. Well, it's a part of Love and Lies where it's M and Friends and we go over debates. And one of the things that I was going to ask is what's considered sex? What is considered sex? I mean, like I know me personally, I have done that. I've also just finessed my ass across the outside of the pants and that has happened. Um, <laughs> it happens and I don't think I'm having sex because I'm not being penetrated, but there's a great, it's a great area. So yes and no depends on the person. So, so is that different at the club versus being at home doing that? I guess you wouldn't do I guess that. I've never dry grinded on a boyfriend at home. <laughs> really? Wait, no, that would be, f no. Close her off because that's where you can really get the action going. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, somebody <laughs> wants to know if it's not just for money, is it for attention? Do some people go in there for attention? Maybe. What about me personally? I don't want the attention. Like when I'm out in public, oh, I better not say what I'm wearing. No, but when I met you, you were like, I would have never in a million years thought you were. You know, just look really, you know, free flowing pants and yes, that's me. No makeup and natural, mm -hmm. more sporty, mm -hmm. athletic, trying to look like the parent that I am, mm -hmm. but more of who, more like have who you I ever am. seen one of the other mother's husbands at school in the club? Have you ever ran into somebody where in church that you knew? or anybody in those places where you mm -hmm. <laughs> really mm -hmm. <laughs> teachers coaches therapists lawyers what's the look doctors. on their face well, they're there to see that person <laughs> <laughs> so there's like great okay and their wife or their girlfriend's right next to them um i haven't actually had that experience but I've definitely seen a lot of the men in the community or on a, the premise of Do a you school. act like you just, you know, nothing? Yeah. It's almost like they're, they don't exist. They don't exist until they're in my office. It's the office. It's not the club anymore, you guys. No, it's girls. the office. <laughs> it's, it's my office. It's where I conduct business. Um, all right. There's three questions. I really enjoyed this interview okay good. i have i really have i hope that people walk away with it thinking well you know i think we've given them a lot to think about actually i'm, I'm interested to see what it sounds yeah, like. yeah i mean <clears throat> if you guys have any questions or comments you can definitely leave it we'll post this um and you can leave it there and and you'll jump on and take a look at what they've got to say sure so there's three questions i ask every guest <laughs> So I've been, this is, I've been racking my brain. I don't even know what, okay, here we go. Uh, All right. Where is the love? <laughs> yeah. Just, just first thing there's love in your first story. You think of. Okay. Uh, where is the love in your story? The love comes from surviving, wanting to make sure that my children are taken care of and that I'm taken care of. And that's the motivation. It comes from love. That's why I'm there doing it. And I'll be branching out, getting out of there soon. Are you? Oh, yeah. So I'm you've got multiple wings. streams of income. I do. She's not just a dancer. You've got, oh, no. You are an entrepreneur. You've got other stuff going on. I do. And you're, and and you're moving I'm on. It's thriving. It's going. It's accelerating. It's, I'm on my way. That's awesome. Yeah, it feels great. Right. What um, are the lies? <laughs> what? 
What are the lies? It's a good question. I don't have the answer. I really don't. It's not weird. When I've listened to you talk, I think the lies that I hear were the things your mother told you and the lies that um, you have to be what everybody else thinks you should be to be a good person or to look like you're a good mom. I think you nailed it. Thanks. Yeah. That's the power coach. <laughs> Cause I drew a blank. I'm like, I don't know which direction to go. I don't know what to extract. I mean, that's from. what you said. Those were my words. Those were your words. So I listen. That's pretty good. And the final question is what is the truth? That are you getting teary eyed? <laughs> are you? <laughs> The truth is that um, despite me being a dancer, I'm a really good person. It doesn't define me as a human being. And it's just a stepping stone to propel me into my greatness. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. Uh, I can't get too like sentimental. I try to like veer away from that. What are you going to walk away? What's your takeaway from this experience today? When you get in your car, your expensive luxury car. I drive <laughs> a non-expensive luxury car. By the way, I am not the stripper buying fancy handbags and driving like outrageous cars. I am very simple. When you get in your car, <laughs> what are you going to, what's your takeaway? Wow. I just did that. Oh, that's awesome. I just did that. Like I, I thought about canceling a bajillion times and then I was like, why? There's a reason why this is happening for you. You said you wanted to motivationally speak. You wanted to empower people. You want to be on TED Talks. You want to travel the world. You want to take your children to different countries. You want to embrace different cultures and eat different types of food and see different scenery and grow and just lead others by example. I'm going to process all of that and say, yeah, I just, I just fucking did that. This is just like bringing me into my greatness. This is a bravery thing. Like I had to grow a cojona <laughs> and do this. So love and lies is helping launch you into your, the rest of your purpose and next part. I mean, wow. Since we've met though, really you guys, this is like the human connection. That's why I don't judge anybody. And I don't want anybody to judge me. People could be listening and judging me left and right. I really don't care. I was going to say It doesn't that matter. I don't care. It doesn't change how dope I am. You're dope, girl. <laughs> you are totally dope. But because I'm so open and my whole thing is, um, I, I did a post on this yesterday about, uh, I felt invisible my whole childhood. Mm. I really did. And I don't want, I want anybody in the same room as me or listening to know that I feel like you're out there. They're listening. I feel you listening. I, I have this thing with people feeling visible and counted. And because of that, I'm open to everyone around me in a way because I got to protect myself because I'm an energy person. But because of that, you know, you listened to a couple podcasts and got confirmation, the serial cheater, and then you accepted God. And now he's in your life. And oh yeah. now you're, you've done this and now you see yourself really who you're wanting to be. You're yeah. walking in and walking towards the woman and your purpose that you're creating in life the, because we met and because we were we opened. Met. And that's the All keyword. Happened. I'm creating. Yes. I've been working on my motivational videos. I'm going to, this is my first podcast. Like it felt good to tell people at work. I told the girls and the guys at the office, I'm doing a podcast today. You're like, that's right. Were they surprised that, that somebody wanted to interview a stripper? The, one of the re relatives of the owners, like you're doing a podcast. Yeah, I am. 
working on my motivational videos. Like I'm already visualizing, like I've got it all planned it. out. I'm on my way. I'm writing a book. I love it. <laughs> I'm trans. You need to write a book on your childhood. Oh, my childhood. Yeah. There's so many people out there that have gone through such traumatic stuff. And when they hear stuff like that, it just helps them feel like they're not alone. I think why I've been so independent raising my children is because at a very young age, I was forced to basically be an adult. Mm -hmm. I'll, t I'll share one quick story because I think you want to wrap this up. People will know who I am now, but I'm, I'm okay. Are you sure? Certain people will know. Yeah. Well, we can always edit it out. It's not, might not make the cut. At 12 years old, I arrived in the big city of Portland, Oregon from a small podunk town in Idaho. And the lady that gave birth to me said, she said my name, I can't do this. And she pulled over into a mall parking garage and said, drive the car. <laughs> the fuck? Okay, first of all, I can barely see over the steering wheel. Second of all, where am I going? Third of all, this is illegal. I was put in the position at a very young age to be so responsible far above what my responsibility ability was. And I had to like take the reins and for that front line, just moving forward. I've always had to do that. And why I just told you this, I don't know. Well, because you know what? <laughs> Now I'm jumping in as a life coach. I love this life coach <laughs> side effect. <laughs> that prepared you for taking over the rest of your life. It's part you of You know it. how to do it. I know how to do it. You like know I've how to do this. it. I don't need anybody else for that. Somebody said to me the other day that um, one of their clients, who does mixed martial arts, would say, life ain't shit. <laughs> Until you life shit. ain't shit. No, like whatever life can bring at you, like life ain't shit. Like you, you, you have this, you've got this, no matter what happens to you, whatever life throws at you, anybody out there listening, you've got it. Oh yeah. Even it's if there for you to overcome it. Full bush and all. It's also there to take you down. Full bush and all. <laughs> full bush and all, folks. Let me tell you. Well, that's going to be my takeaway. So I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm going to be like... She did what? <laughs> I can look back on that. So hard. You like that? You, you like that? <laughs> you like that? And his words were, "You could trim it up a bit. You could drop that." Did you die? <laughs> yes. Because I, did you die? I fucking died. Because I asked him directly, and he spoke directly back at me. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Did you go home? I called my girlfriend from college. I'm like, you're never going to believe this. I had a full bush, and I got called out. Like, She's like, only you. Only you could get away with that. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. Oh, that's awesome. Anything else from you? No, that's it. Thank you, Light. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. You got the truth from Light. <laughs> There you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs>